beloved, if we would take our seats at this moment so that we might begin our service of celebration. Songwriter said it like this I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So I want to make sure if you are in the house right now, can you give God some good praise in this place? Amen. Can you bless his name because you know that our God is good. And all the time our God is good. You can praise God even in the midst of a homegoing celebration. Because our God is worthy. I said he's worthy. Can I say it one more time? He is worthy. Somebody said, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, our God is worthy of praise. We have gathered here today to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Sonia Massey. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we might find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially, oh God, we praise you for Sonia Massey, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these assembled here, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through the years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. We want to do a little housekeeping before we proceed in the service. Beloved, as we honor this family today, I want to ask if you would be so kind to either power off or silence your cell phones. If you would do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. We don't want anything to distract from this moment or this family. Amen, we thank you. We honor the revered clergy who are here and their respective capacities and all the civic and community leaders who have come out in support of, of this family. We, we thank God for you and your presence today. We, we are grateful for the opportunity to share in fellowship and I believe that God shall speak today. I believe that God is going to move today. And so I ask that we prepare our hearts and our minds because this is a celebration. Let me say that one more again. This is a celebration. And so as we gather together to worship our God and remember Sonia Massey, let us avail ourselves to how the spirit would move in and through us today. We're going to follow uh, the program as it is outlined. I'm going to ask right now if Reverend Chantel King Beckwith would render unto us our Old and New Testament scriptures. Let the church say amen. Amen. O 
Old Testament scripture is Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, surely, yes. surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The New Testament scripture is, is John, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? You believe in God? Ye believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That I am, that where I am, you may be also. And whether I go, ye go, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know it not where you goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the truth, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. Amen. 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 Let us receive at this moment Sister Tiffany Cunningham and Sister Vondra Brown as they render us a musical selection. Let the people of God say amen. Amen.
salvation. And I fight with the sin that I have until I die. That's when I'm gonna stand up. Take my people with me. Together we are going to a brand new home. For a God for Sister Tiffany. Amen. 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 At this time, we will have the reading of resolutions and cause. Shall that person come at this time? Bless your family. Be comforted in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a few resolutions. These resolutions are to encourage the family and friends who have lost a loved one. The first one from the Ministerial Alliance of Springfield and Vicinity. Resolution for Sonia Lene Wilburn Massey. We, the members of the Ministerial Alliance of Springfield and vicinity, extend our heartfelt sympathy to the family, loved ones, and entire Springfield community in the passing of Miss Sonia Lene Wilburn Massey. As we unite in this time of sorrow, we are yet persuaded that our Father in Heaven will guide and comfort the family of Miss Massey each day with courage and strength for heaven above. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. One more. Again, grace to your family and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort for which we ourselves are comforted by God. That's from 2 Corinthians 1 and 2 and 4. Presented this Lord's Day, July 19, 2024, Bishop Jonathan Franklin, President of the Springfield Area Ministerial Alliance. from Ruby Funeral Services and Crematoriums. Resolution and loving memory of Sonia Lene Wilburn Massey. Uh, we the staff at Ruby Funeral Services and Crematoriums would like the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather together to celebrate the homegoing services of our dear beloved sister, Sonia Lene Wilburn Massey. To the family, we know that your loss is deep and we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. We commend you to him who knoweth best and will always do right. I only know one person like that. <laughs> and he never makes a mistake. Oh, I know for sure. No, we're talking about Jesus now. You have our sincere prayers. The righteous perish and no one takes it to heart. The devout are taken away and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. Not my words, but the words of the Holy Scripture from Isaiah 57, 1 and 2. Humbly submitted on this Friday, July 19, 2024, Ruby Funeral Services and Staff. Continuing 
a resolution in loving memory of Sonia Lene Wilburn Massey, to uh, Mrs. Rita Edwards, Donald, and family. Whereas it has pleased the Almighty God to take home with him your dearly beloved niece, Sonia Lene Wilburn Massey, please be comforted by his words of assurance. From Matthew 5 and 4, which says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. God's love and care is unending. His grace, it is sufficient. His love is the anchor that holds us up through such uncertain times and the stronghold that keeps us in his caring embrace. God's word urges us to show family affection to one another with brotherly love, outdo one another in showing honor. Rita Donald and family, it is because of your niece's devotion to her family, her love for you, and your mutual love for her, that we count it all joy to you, and we encourage you to, in order to build you up. As you experience this tremendous pain of the absence of your beloved sister, Sonia Renee Wilburn Massey, our prayer for you is that our Heavenly Father would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. While your niece uh, was dear to her family, the psalmist reminds us that she was also dear to our God, as expressed in Psalms 116.15, which uh, says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Although your beloved is now absent from among us, uh, she is at home with the Lord. Perhaps she is rejoicing now more than ever as she moves one step closer to receiving that crown of righteousness which we all seek, those of us that love the Lord. Yeah. Now this crown of righteousness was the Lord, the righteous judge will give on her the day of his return. And this prize is not just for her, but for all who eagerly look forward to his return. Be encouraged knowing that your beloved future is secure and you will see her again. In addition, our Heavenly Father offers these words of encouragement from Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness, joyful, joyfully and prayerfully submitted by uh, pastors and elders, deacons and deaconesses, prayer ministry, comfort and care ministry, and members of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Amen. Continuing on, this resolution from Second Timothy Baptist Church, resolution to the bereaved family of Sonia Lene Wilburn Massey, whereas the pastor, officers, and members of Second Timothy Baptist Church were greatly saddened to learn that the death of about the death of Sonia Lene Wilburn Massey, and whereas Sister Wilburn Massey's devotion to a life in Christ was exemplified by her dedication to her family, friends, and community. And whereas it is certain that the love and warmth that Sonia shared with, with all of us, she knew will be long remembered and treasured by her family and friends alike. We know she will truly be missed by her family as a daughter, mother, sister, niece, friend, confidant, and so forth. Therefore, be it resolved that the pastor, officers, and members of Second Timothy Baptist Church convey our heartfelt sympathy to the family and friends of our beloved sister, Wilburn Massey. We encourage you to lean completely. Uh, may I say that again? We, we encourage you to lean completely upon God who will both comfort and strengthen you in these days ahead. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tears from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. That's from Revelations 21 and 3. I believe we're coming up on some end times. Look like it to me. 
humbly submitted this 19th day of July 24. Deborah A. Holmes, Assistant Church Clerk, and Gary Holman, the pastor of Second Timothy Baptist Church. Uh, finally, a proclamation from Senator Doris Turner, remembering Sonia, Sonia Massey, presented this 19th day of July 2024. Whereas Sonia Lene Wilburn Massey was born in San Diego, California on February 12, 1988, and whereas Sonia was a loving mother to her two children, Mal Malachi Hill and Jeanette Massey, and a devoted daughter, friend and neighbor, and whereas Sonia loved to do hair and spread time with her family, and whereas Sonia was a member of Second Timothy Baptist Church in Springfield, and whereas Sonia retired from and uh, gaming and gaming in Springfield. And whereas the Springfield community mourns the unjust and untimely death of Sonia on July 6, 2024, therefore, it is proclaimed by the Senate of the 130th General Assembly of the state, the 103rd, I'm jumping ahead of myself, 103rd General Assembly of the State of Illinois that we hereby honor and remember the life of Sonia Massey and it uh, be further proclaimed that a suitable copy of this resolution be presented to Sonia Massey's family as a symbol of our esteem and respect. Again, family, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, family and friends family and community be comforted in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Thompson. At this time, we're going to ask Sister Shadia Massey to come and read the obituary. Shadia, I'm sorry. Shadia Massey. Charge it to my head and not my heart. Although I'm not Shadia, she asked me to read the obituary on her behalf. Sonia Lene Wilbur Massey, 36, departed this life on July 6, 2024 at HSHS St. John's Hospital. She was born February 12, 1988 in San Diego, California, the daughter of Donna Massey and James Wilbur. She was a member of Second Timothy Baptist Church. She was a very devoted mother. She loved to do hair and spend time with her family. Sonia retired from a J&J &J gaming in Springfield, Illinois. She was preceded in death by grandparents Raymond Jeanette Massey and Felix Hattie Wilbur. She leaves to cherish memories, son Malachi Hill Massey of Springfield, Illinois. Daughter, daughter Jeanette Massey of Springfield, Illinois. Mother Donna Massey of Springfield, Illinois, and Father James Renee Wilburn, Sister Eva Wilburn, Khadijah Wilburn Allen, and Brene Joe Tolles, and several aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, and other family members and friends. On behalf of Sonia's family, I send, send my sincerest condolences to you all. Thank you. Amen. At this time, we will receive remarks, and at the request of the family, they are asking that uh, you would please keep your remarks to uh, two minutes or, or less, please. And so let us please honor uh, this family's wishes as we prepare to receive remarks. Hello, everybody. Good morning. My name is Monet. Ma, you know me as Moni. Sonia was my friend. 
friend. Sonia was my good friend and we grew up. Like during our teenage years. <laughs> it can't be. I just want to say I love her so much. I love you. Um, yeah. This didn't, should never happen to her. And I hope she's truly at peace now. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. I just want to say that um, Sonia meant the world to her family. She meant the world to Malachi. She meant the world to Summer, Jeanette. She meant the world to Mr. Wilburn. She meant the world and the world to Miss Donna Massey and her aunt Ramona Massey and all of her aunts and uncles. She meant the world to us. It's very unfortunate that we live in a world that someone who was so loving and beautiful could be taken from us. I just ask that you all continue to pray with us and stay in the word. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16 reads, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. So we know that Sonia is in a place where she will have everlasting life and joy and peace. Amen. Are there any others who would like to share? And as they are coming, I would be remiss if I did not welcome Attorney Benjamin Crump uh, with us today. And he will come in his own way to give you Hello, family. Um, I'm Kirby Massey, I'm Sonia's first two. Thing. I forgot to mention how good it's like cook. <laughs> I've been a vegetarian for 25 years, and I still miss her shredded chicken nachos. <laughs> um, was real talented. She would say she wants something, she would go after it. We went out one time, and Sonia kept talking about she wanted a turkey leg. <laughs> and cuz we just got on the floor, and she dropped real low and got back up, and she had that plate with that turkey leg. <laughs> and I, I still to the day don't know how she got that plate. <laughs> Um, I got three scriptures that I've been reading. Oh, I had a question to God. I had a question to him. Um, he's real, but <laughs> um, Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And my last scripture, John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection mm. and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. I love you so much, cousin. 
M. It was rest peacefully. My name is Sean Gregory. I'm ornament of War II. The Black War, as many call it. And it is my promise that we're going to see justice well beyond this office of the bill. Every day we, we fight for policies to make our lives better. And we fail here. And we're going to use every day that I sit in that seat to fight for justice for our system and all of us. I love you all. And I promise you, yeah. we will not let her name go in vain. I promise you. Yeah. To Pastor Beckwith, Dr. Ruby Davis, Teresa Haley, Senator Doris Turner, and all the other leaders assembled, but especially, especially to Sawyer's mother, Donna, Sawyer's father, James, Sawyer's firstborn, Malachi, to Sawyer's baby, Summer, and to Shadia, who was on the scene trying to clean up the blood. And to all of Sonia Massey's family and friends, I'm attorney Ben Crump, and as we celebrate the life of this beautiful 36-year-old black queen, We come to speak up for justice for Sawyer Massey. We come to stand up for justice for Sawyer Massey. We come to fight for justice for Sawyer Massey. Brothers and sisters, when this horrible video of this senseless killing of this innocent black woman who called the police seeking help, when this horrible video is released, it is going to shock the conscience of America, like the pictures of Emmett Till after he was lynched. When this horrible video is released, it's going to shock the conscience of America like the senseless video of our little brother Laquan McDonald in Chicago, Illinois, who was shot 16 times in the back as he walked away. When this horrible video is released, it's going to shock the conscience for you all who live here in Springfield, Illinois, like the horrific video of Earl Moore. And James and Donna, when this horrible video is released of this person who was supposed to protect and serve us yeah. shooting and killing your daughter, it is going to shock the conscience of America. Just like the video of George Floyd shocked the conscience of the world. 
It is that senseless, that unnecessary, that unjustifiable, that unconstitutional. I mean, this, this video is tragic in every sense. I mean, this, this sheriff's deputy was twice as large as Sawyer. Right, Cliff? In fact, they said over double the size of her. Sawyer at most, I think, from you, Mr. James, weighed at most 110, 120 pounds. 110, Miss Donna. Well, they say this deputy weighed in excess of 260 pounds. Why would you have to use a gun to shoot her in the head? No. 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 Sonya's last words was, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And she said, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry before she was shot in her face. And so we say to Deputy Sean Grayson, until we get justice, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We say to the Singerman County Sheriff's Department, until we get justice, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We say to the state of Illinois, until we get justice for Sonia Massey, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We say to the United States of America, until we get justice for this black queen, Sonia Massey, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And we want full justice. We don't want half justice. We don't want three-fifths justice. We want full justice for Selma and Malachi's mama. Full justice. Full justice. Tim and Jimmy, we don't want the Laquan McDonald justice. You see, we don't want this precedent that was set in the state of Illinois after they murdered Laquan McDonald. We can't be satisfied with just charges. Y'all do understand that in Laquan McDonald's case, brothers and sisters, they charged him with 16 counts of murder. And he could have gotten as much as I understand 25 years in prison. But I know I'm speaking to the choir. Y'all saw the rules just change when there's black people lying dead on the ground. They end up getting slaps on the wrist. I mean, that police officer who murdered that teenager walking away from him only got a little over three years. I mean, people in our neighborhood got more than that for selling weed. But for him murdering that young black boy, Malachi, about your age, they only gave him uh, 39 months is what he got and he served. So we ain't satisfied with charges. We know that until we get conviction, until we get a full justice, until we make sure that he is sitting in a jail cell for 25 years, if not life, we won't be satisfied.
because Pastor Beth, well, we take America at its words. When they say we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equally, that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that amongst them are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Well, what would you give that officer had he killed a white woman in her own home who called you for help? Well, whatever you would give him for killing a white woman, you got to do the same thing for some of your masters. Because we demand equal justice. We're going to keep speaking up for equal justice for some of your masters. We're going to keep standing up for justice for some of your masters. And we're going to keep fighting for justice for some of your masters. Because Soma and Malachi got to know that their mother life matters. Just as much as anybody else knows that. So in conclusion, and it's hard watching Miss Donna and Mr. James bury their daughter. Every parent believes that their child will bury them not the other way around. But because their mother has been so senselessly and tragically taken away from them, to this community and all of America, we have to make sure that these children know that none of us will rest peacefully until we get justice for Sonia Massey. As Reverend Al always says, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Justice for Sonia Massey. Justice for Sonia Massey. Justice for Sonia Massey. Beloved, let us bless the name of our God once again for Attorney Benjamin Crump. Amen. 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 At this juncture on our program, we shall receive uh, tributes from friends and family if they would come at this time. Praise the Lord, saints. As Attorney Crump told you, the last words out of my baby's mouth is I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And there's no doubt in my mind that my baby is resting in the arms of Jesus. I don't think that her grandparents and her aunts and uncles and cousins who preceded her in death, they ain't finished loving up on her yet. You see, my, my baby got tired of living in temporary housing. You see, there's a home that she had that's not made by men's hands. 
There's some streets that are made of gold. And I have eulogized a few people. I was looking in my Bible on Sunday. And when I eulogize those people, some of them I don't even remember. But I told them to look to the hills from which cometh their help. I'm looking to the hills right now from which cometh my help. I'm able to speak to you today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, because my anchor holds. It grips the solid rock. I got a message for Sangamon County. I love you, my brothers and sisters. But if what I've heard is true about y'all sheriff, he needs to go. I know that they have lowered the standards for what is an acceptable member of law enforcement. But if a black man, if he has a blemish on his credit because he paid his credit card bill too late, or his house note too late, you know he can't be hired as a member of law enforcement. But here's a man who killed my baby. He had two DUIs. He spent three years in the military and came out as a four and he came out as a PFC. That don't happen, y'all. You get promoted to corporal, lance corporal, something. So there was all these red flags. Yeah. And yet they still made him a deputy in this county. Let me say to the state senator, she gave us that great resolution. There needs to be, here in the state of Illinois, when you are allowed to resign from a police department, and then they recycle you, and you go on to the next police department. Illinois can be number one state senator. Introduce the bill tomorrow that when you are in lieu of being fired from a police department, you don't go on to the next one. See, in this country, you need to pass the George Floyd Policing Act. You need to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. And Illinois can be number one. State Senator, introduce the bill tomorrow. And you can call it the Sonia Massey Bill. If my daddy was the state senator in Illinois, and I want a commitment from Governor Pritzker that he's going to sign it, I want a commitment from President Biden that he's going to renew the fight for that George Floyd bill. And do it For what John Milheiser did in Sangamon County. Let me tell y'all about Eric Weston of the Illinois State Police. Them some good brothers. 
In 10 days, they convened a grand jury. They completed their investigation. They arrested. They got him fired. That's unheard of, y'all. But they killed my baby. But you see what the devil meant for evil. God meant for good. Now, for people here, if that anchor don't grip the solid rock, Pastor, Pastor Beckworth, I'm not going to take your thunder here. But you know, if you don't know, if you don't know what I know, I know what I know. I, I used to look at people and say, well, is this the day? See, some people are going to be scared when they drive by a cemetery and they see them bodies coming up out the ground. But it ain't going to scare me, y'all. Because I'm next. I got next. I'm going to leave this world because I'm tired of living in temporary housing too. I'm going to that house not made of hands. I'm going to tell y'all I love everybody in here. And ain't nothing y'all can do about it. hear my baby, she said, thank y'all for coming. Good morning. Praise the Lord. To the family, you have my sincere condolences. And on behalf, I did not personally know Sonia, but I do know certain members of the family. My name is Joy Morris, and I am representing the Improved Benevolent Protective Order Elks of the World. Brother Wilburn is my exalted ruler in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And I am the state directress of our Civil Liberties Department. And I want the family to know that we are here for them in any way, shape, form, or fashion that we can be. And I pray that this tragic incident will be a learning curve for many of us. It's time for us to stop talking and to start doing something. And we intend to form an alliance with other like-minded organizations here in Springfield and around the country because we are a worldwide organization to start ensuring that bills are passed, not just put on the floor, but that they are passed around this country to ensure that these incidents stop. Okay. Period, in the sense, because there's no need for these kinds of things to happen to any, no family should have to endure Amen. this type of injustice. Yeah. And so, to the family, you have our condolences, and we are here for you, and I'm extending an invitation to other like-minded organizations. We will be reaching out to you uh, from our Civil Liberties Department to form a coalition. Attorney Crump, we are here for you. Brother Wilburn, you know we love you and we are here for you. Thank you. I'm Sam Canman. I'm one of 29 members of the Sangamon County Board. I didn't know Sonia Massey before this incident, but I know her now and the world knows her now unfortunately and it's hard to believe 
that we've been so unfortunate in Springfield that we've had to have the great attorney Ben Crump come here not once but twice now in less than a couple of years. And, you know, we need to do something on the county board and, as the gentleman said earlier, statewide, to reform the hiring process for police officers, sheriff's deputies. I mean, it's hard to believe if you want to, if you work for Federal Express, you get one DUI, you're out the door. Yeah. You're gone. Yeah. You can, and that's just carrying around cardboard boxes. This is a job where you don't just carry around cardboard boxes. You carry a gun and you enforce the law. You use deadly force. And here, a man who got, I think, at least two DUIs and had worked for, I don't know how many, a dozen police forces gets hired by the Sangamon County Sheriff's deputies. Did he get a mental exam? The guy, uh, I mean, we need to, uh, we're, I'm going to demand to know what is the process that the sheriff uses to hire deputies and reform it and make sure we never have any deputies like this hired ever again. Sonia's family, and my sincere condolences. We can't bring her back, but we can work to make sure nothing like this, nothing like this ever happens again. Until later, I want to ask you, uh, Brother Gregory Spalding, if he would prepare to make his way up. Uh, he won't be here. Okay, okay. Do we have any solo holes? Okay, all right, all right. Well, 
Okay, all right, all right. We, we, we got you, Vondra. I, I want to say this real quick. Come on, make your way up, uh, Vondra. How many in this place are over 18? If you're 18 through 21. Eight, I'm sorry, 18 through 21. 18. I need all the young people in this place. And if you know some young people in this uh, around you who have never voted. Yeah. You tell them I said that in November, you better not sit this one out. I know I'm being recorded, let me say it again. You better not sit this one out on November 6th. Because if we let, allow certain folks to get back in office, What this family has experienced will become even more of a commonplace. And so we got to band together, y'all. Don't sit this one out. Don't say stuff like, my vote doesn't matter. Yes, it does. They wouldn't be doing all this redistricting or redlining if your vote did not matter. My mama used to say to me before she would spank me, doctor, I can show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> we got to show the world. <laughs> well, I I'll share this with you, sister. What did, what did your baby say? I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We rebuking that in the name of Jesus. God will be glorified. And we believe by faith that it will work out for your good and for God's glory. Come on, sing, Sister Vine.
God say amen. amen. Can we say amen one more time? Amen. God has met us here today. We really have already heard the eulogy. I don't suspect that I have much to offer. But I ask that you pray with me and pray for me. Again, we honor, we give honor to whom honor is due today. To all the revered clergy, the civic leaders that are here to the friends who have come out, and especially to this family. Let me say to you, because I know from experience, there's going to come a time when the phone calls become a little less frequent. Folks just won't show up like they have been. And it's not because they don't love you. It's because we just have this way of going on with our life. <laughs> but I want to speak to you and let you know that even in the days and weeks to come, that you allow precious memories <laughs> to linger in your life as you remember and reflect you still don't cry some more. You ain't done crying. But that's all right. Have your moments. And don't let anybody tell you to get over it. There is no expiration date on grief. There is no time limit when you can just move on with your life. <laughs> but hold on to the memories. Remember the light and the love that Sonia gave to you and to each and every one of us in this place today. One verse I want to lift up from the 46th Psalm. <coughs> and you all know it. You've heard it before. It's verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in times of trouble. That's all I got. I just want to talk to us today briefly about the God we need in times like these. The God we need in times like these. I do want to first publicly thank this family for this high yet intense honor. This is a weighty Moment. This is a moment that has great magnitude and it is not lost upon me. I've been in this thing long enough. Mm. I've stood behind desks and uh, presided over homegoing services enough to know that, that these, these times you should never take for granted. Right. Nor should you never take lightly to stand as God's spokesperson on such a solemn yet celebratory occasion. I have to admit today that as, as I, I'm here and I'm looking at you all, I, I find it hard to adequately convey words that would ease the pain and the grief that you all are experiencing. I don't have enough vocabulary in and of myself to be able to enunciate in a sufficient manner what you all are feeling. But the one thing I can share with you today is that you are certainly loved. Amen. 
Amen. You will continue to be supported. And just like Aaron no. and her, yeah. folks will lift your arms up yeah. when you find yourself a little weak, weary, and warm. Yeah. You will continue to be taken care of. And I thank God for a community that stands besides its folk. I thank God for a community that outstretches its arms and wraps its collective arms around persons who are dealing with tragedy and yeah. trial and, and turmoil. Yeah. I thank God that we are in the midst of a community that knows how to bond together and rally around one another, not just when some tragic events occurs, but all the time. Because sometimes, if the truth be told, we all we got. Amen. Most of us have learned that when you thought you could depend on some, they seem to leave you high and dry. But today, family, these people here are a testament to the fact that you will not walk alone. Amen. That they will hold you up and keep you lifted in prayer. And, and whatever the need is, it shall be supplied because... This community has, has made the declaration that what happened to Sonia happened to all of us. Yeah. And so we thank God today for a community that stands, doesn't run away from one another when the unthinkable happens, but we draw closer to one another. I, I'm reminded of what Dr. King wrote in his letter from the Birmingham jail. He says that we are caught in an in, inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects us one directly affects us all indirectly. May we never forget that we need each other. May we never forget that we have a collective responsibility to look out and take care of one another. Beloved, I know that right now there are more questions than answers. I know that a lot of you are frustrated in this house. Why did this happen the way it happened? Why didn't leadership do differently? Why did they do the opposite of what they have been trained to do? The fact of the matter is, beloved, we really shouldn't even be here. Let me say that one more time. We should not be here. Amen. But once again, here we are. And unfortunately, you all have become part of a club that no one wants to be a part of. Because it seems as if on one hand it's justice. And on the other hand, it's just us. On this Friday, Sonia should be here laughing, enjoying fellowship with her family, smiling and having fun and living her life with God as the source of her strength and the strength of her life. But yet here we are, traversing through the valley of the shadow of death, and it simply doesn't make any sense. Scripture does remind us that life is but a vapor. It used to be that we could be here today and gone tomorrow. The fact of the matter is we can be here today and gone today. And because this is the truth, we must take our lives seriously. We must take advantage of each day because each day is a gift that God gives us so graciously. We got to learn how to love more. We got to learn how to communicate more. Quit falling out over foolish stuff. Because at the end of the day, it does not matter. And there should never, ever be a family reunion at a funeral. Family, you got to learn how to spend time one with another. 
enjoy these moments, make new memories, because there's going to come a time when each and every one of us, the last trump will sign. And we don't want to leave this earth with any regrets talking about what we should have done. Or oh, I wish I would have. Or oh, I could have, but I just didn't take time to do so. We're here today in a place and space that none of us expected. A place of unimaginable grief and, and pain. Some are in this place and you're doing the very best you can to try to hold in your anger. Because we have been conditioned to look at the circumstances surrounding someone's death and that colors and clouds how we view things. But I want us today not to look at the death, but look at the life. Amen. Spend some time focusing on the life and, and celebrate the life that was lived. I, I, I declare, and you've heard it already today, that we do not grieve as others who have no hope. For we believe that God will bring G with Jesus those who have fallen asleep with him. You ought to thank God today that some of you were saved. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that was good. That was good. That was good. But I, let me say it one more time. You really ought to thank your God that some of you were saved, that she knew the Lord Jesus Christ for herself. And that's good news, y'all, because there is no need to worry about where our soul is residing. I heard it somewhere read like this, to be absent from the body. Y'all read that too. You don't have to fret as to whether Sonya is secure or safe. The good news is that she is resting in the arms of her master and her maker. And not only that, she is in a mansion that was tailor-made and specifically designed just for her. She's in a place now where the wicked shall cease from troubling and, and the weary shall be at rest. And she took off these old worn and tattered clothes and now she's been clothed with the crown of righteousness. And now she has a white robe that's been yeah. dipped in the blood. Somebody in this place, you ought to thank your God that she is saved, she is safe, and so is secure. No circumstances that led to her leaving this earth were certainly not good, but I need you to know that because she knew the Lord and the Lord knew her, that she is good right now. Amen. Let me say that one more time. She is good right now. And the truth of the matter is, we got to make sure we are doing what we need to do so that we can meet her again. And make sure that we are living our lives in such a manner that God might be glorified. That one uh, small morning when the trumpet sounds for us, we all can hear the words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. My assignment here is to do my very best to allow the God of comfort to envelop us with his divine comforting presence. For God is the God we need in times like these. And the reason that I can declare, and I pray that there are others in this place who have this same testimony, that God is the God we need in times like these, is because I've tried him for myself. I, I know when others walked away, God stuck closer to me than a brother or a sister. I know that when folks forsook me, God never left nor forsook me. I know that when the road got rough, God gave me peace like a river, and I'm not the only one. I know that there are some witnesses in the place right now who can testify that God continues to remain good to them. God made the promise to you never to leave you nor forsake you. You tried God for yourself. The old folks used to say, you can't make me doubt them because I know too much about them. Is there anybody in this place who can lift a hand and say, I know something about my God. I know what he's done for me. I know the difference he's made for me. I know the way he's made in my life. It is no secret. What God can do. What he's done for others. He will do for you. He'll give you peace in the midst of this crisis. He'll give you joy in the midst of this storm. He'll give you hope for tomorrow. All you got to do is just hold on to the unchanging hand of God. But there are a couple of other attributes I want to share with us today. 
particularly to this family and everyone who is assembled in, in this house, that as the days, the weeks, the months, and even the years go by, I pray that they will help you and sustain you as you remember Sonia. The first thing you need to know is simply God is our refuge. Amen. And you all know what a refuge is. It's a, a safe haven. It, it's a place of, of shelter. It, it's a place where you can find comfort when it feels as if you are in an uncomfortable place. It's a sanctuary, and, and no doubt, beloved, with all that has transpired, you are in an uncomfortable space. No doubt, with all that has transpired, you find yourselves with, with doubt, and you have angst, and, and it is certainly in order, considering what you are enduring in the moment. But the good news that I want to share today, and Sonya knew this, is that she sought refuge and comfort in her relationship with God, even in the midst of trying times. Can, can I encourage somebody today? You don't need a bottle. Can I encourage somebody today? You don't need a blunt. Can I encourage somebody today? You, you don't need to do things that you know you should not be doing. But if you really want to find some refuge, if you really want to find some strength, if you really want to find some solace, you need to go to God. You can find safe and peace in the hands of God. When it feels as if the storm cloud is right over your head. And no one else is. God is your refuge. When you feel as if you don't know where to go and what to do next, God is your refuge. When it seems as if all oh, hope is lost and the answers you are seeking you cannot find, you need to know that God is your refuge. Secondly, we see in the text that not only is God your refuge and our refuge, God is your strength. Amen. We say that one more time. God is your strength. And the reason that this is so wonderful, because many of you have been trying to hold it together as best you could. You've been trying to be the rock for the family. You've been the one that's had to make all the decisions for the family. And, but I want you to know this, that even the strongest person has weak moments. Even the best of us have seasons in our lives when it feels as if it's too much to bear. Here it is, y'all. Don't worry about trying to be so strong. Don't worry about trying to have all the answers. Don't worry about trying to make all the decisions. Because the Bible says that when you are at your weakest, that's when God is at God's strongest. I know somebody is saying, I, I was just talking to Sonya. I was just making plans with Sonya. And now I'm at her funeral. Even the best of us will be weak and it's okay to have a weak moment yeah. you can find solace and strength in your God he's promised to be the source of your strength the truth of the matter is this you're not going to get through this without God holding you up and God holding you together yeah. it's alright to have a breakdown it's alright to go in your room and shut the door and let the tears flow it's all right to yell and scream and cuss. Do what you need to do. But when you're done yelling, and when you're done screaming, and when you're done cussing, call on God. Because God will be the source of your strength. But he's the God we need in times like these. The hymn writer said it like this, ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you, and he will carry you through. God is the God we need in times like these because God is our refuge. God is our strength. If you've been following along with the verse, you'll know what I'm about to say next. God is a very present help in times of trouble. I want to encourage you today that God is Emmanuel. The God who is with us. The God who is always with us. God's hands will continue to hold you. God's presence will continue to envelop you. God's love will continue to keep you. May your faith in God continue to sustain you. 
The good news is that you can call on God in the morning. You can call on God at noon. You can call on God late in the midnight hour and God will be there with you. It's good news to know today. Is there anybody in this house who can testify that every time you called on God, God was right there for you? His line was never too busy. He didn't put you on hold. All you said is Jesus and he showed up right on time and on time. Text says, the Bible says that if you draw closer to God in times like these, God will draw closer to you. Isaiah 41 and 10 says this, so do not fear, family, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. The old saints used to say it like this, doctor, be not dismayed. Yeah. Whatever be time, God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God has made the promise never to leave nor forsake you. God has said that the righteous will never be forsaken nor their seeds begging for bread. God has promised to walk with you and talk with you and tell him that you are his own. I'm really done. But I stopped by on assignment today. Just to let the people know that if we really want to honor the memory of Sonia, honor her by the way that you continue to live. Amen. Honor her by loving more. Honor her by embracing more. Honor her by fellowshipping more. Honor Sonia by continuing to be beacons of light by standing up for what is just and right and fair. Honor Sonia by continuing to fight for goodness and peace. Allow her legacy not to be determined by the circumstances of how she left this earth, but remember her for the difference that she made while she was on this earth. Although her voice has been silenced, everybody in this place, we need to keep speaking up and speaking out so that she's never forgotten. Let's put our collective hands to the plow and don't look back. Do the great work that God has called us to do. Because even in 2024, the struggle is still real. The fight is still relevant. And the issues are still relevant. The need for perseverance and determination to the cause of uplifting our people as freedom fighters is as strong as ever. Now is not the time to stop. Remember Sonia. Now is not the time to succumb. Remember Sonia. Now is not the time to relent. Remember Sonia. Now is not the time to fold. Remember Sonia. Now is the time to stand up. Remember Sonia. Now is the time to speak out. Remember Sonia. Do not become weary in well doing. Remember Sonia. Run your race. Remember Sonia. Do justly love mercy and walk humbly with your God. Remember some Sonia. Love one another. Support, empower, encourage, and uplift one another. Remember Sonia. Because the darkness of that day cannot and will not extinguish the light of Sonia Mass. But here's what it did. It just made our resolve a little more resolute. It made our determination a little more definite. It fortified our faith. And it made our spirits just a little more steadfast. Now is the time to trust that the same God that was with Sonia is the same God that shall be with you. Because God is the God we need in times like these. If I were to speak to her right now, I, I would say, baby girl, you didn't know that you could bring a community together, but you did. You didn't know that God would use you to affect change, but you did. You couldn't have possibly known that you would be a catalyst for justice, but you are. Rest well, sister. Rest well. While we are still here, we'll make sure that you are never forgotten. Amen. This is the God we need yes. in times yes. like these. And I shouldn't do this. May I do this with your permission, Pastor? If you don't know him, if you don't know this God, 
Now is as good a time as any to get to know him. Because there will come a day when the last trump will sound for each and every one of us. And we want to leave this earth knowing that we know that we know that we will rest in the arms of our maker and our master. To God be the glory. Because Sonia Massey came this way. I hate that it happened the way it did. But I believe with everything that's within me, justice will prevail. I believe with everything within me that the righteous will be vindicated. I believe with everything in me that even though weeping may endure for the night, it will come in the morning. Would you do me a favor? Just lift your hands all over this place. You're lifting hands in reverence to the God of your salvation. You're lifting hands in remembrance to the life of Sonia Massey. You're lifting hands because you know that God is not done with you yet. There's greatness that's attached in your life. There's destiny that's attached to your life. God is going to use you as a vessel of his glory. What no eye see, no ear is heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men and women the great and wonderful things that God has in store for those who love him. I believe that even through this pain, God shall be glorified. Amen. The devil is already defeated. Amen. And God's people will walk in victory. Because he's the God we need in time like these. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, bless the name of our God. This I'm going to ask now if the attendants from Ruby's funeral home would come and lead us forward.